Well, we did it, friends. We made it to day 30. If I had confetti, I would be throwing it up in the air because I'm so proud of you for sticking with this for 30 days. And maybe you're like, um, oh, Miss Karis, I really didn't do 30 days. I only did a few days. It doesn't matter. If you did 30, if you did five, if you did one, this is your first day with us. I am so excited that you are here on day 30. Go back and watch all the other videos that you missed, okay? What have you learned? How have you applied it to your life? How have you used it to encourage your friends and let them know, hey, you're not alone. I have been dealing with some anxiousness, but this is what God has been teaching me how to respond when I have anxious thoughts or I have anxious feelings. And God is going to use you to be a light to them. Remember, the darkness does not overcome the light. That is the first thing we learn on the very first day. And God outshines those anxiety elephants and he is helping you stomp them and overcome them. So even after we finish today, keep reading, keep reading. Remember, that's why I told you guys, I'm not reading the devotional to you because I want you to be in the habit of spending time with God, you and him reading this devotional. Maybe you are spending time as a family with God. Maybe you are doing this on your own and you're filling out those journaling pages, whatever it is, continue to walk with the Lord and let him equip you and empower you to stomp out these anxiety elephants. Make sure that you still stay subscribed to my YouTube page at Kara Snyder. Find me on Instagram and Facebook at Kara Snyder so that you can stay in touch with me. And then my friends on TikTok, my tween friends and teen friends, find me there at Karis underscore Snyder, because I want to keep talking to you. I want to know how life is going, how I can pray for you, how you're using these practical, biblical coping skills to respond when those anxiety elephants try to come through. Now, this last day, day 30, this is a day, it's kind of a practical day, or it kind of may be, a, it's a situational day that may cause you to feel some anxiety. And if this is something that is happening in your life and your parents are watching with you, talk to them and let them know they want to know. They're not going to dismiss you. Um, and if your parents are not watching with you, it's important that after we talk about this today, go tell them. Go tell a trusted adult. Maybe it's not your parents in your life, but maybe it's someone else so that you can have help. Um, our scripture for day 30 is Deuteronomy 3, verse 22. This is the NIV version. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. And on this day, you're going to read about a little boy who was bullying me. I was actually in the fifth grade. I went to school with this little boy. I uh, even went to church with him. And he made fun of me all, all the time. Have you been bullied? Are you being bullied right now? Maybe a bully is uh, hurting you in the bathroom, or maybe they take your lunch from you, or they uh, mess up your homework paper. Maybe it was a bully like I had, and they make fun of you, and they follow you. Um, this bully, for me, he made fun of the way that I talked, the way that I answered questions, even in Sunday school. Uh, he would look for me to make me feel uncomfortable, but I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody, and it got so bad that I had these horrible, horrible headaches that I was experiencing, and uh, I lost my peripheral vision, which is this vision that you see out of the corners of your eyes, and I thought I was going blind, thought I was going blind. So I did tell my mom about the vision part and we got to the doctor and he was asking me, Karis, are you being picked on? Are you being bullied? And out of nowhere, I just started to cry. And I told the doctor and my mom what was going on. My mom was, she was floored y'all. She could not believe what had been happening. But something interesting happened as I was sharing, uh, my vision started to come back and my headaches started to go in way. So it was like I, all this stuff that I was holding on to, holding so closely to me that I felt like I, I had to hide and I couldn't tell anyone. As I released it, my body felt relief and it felt better. And that pressure, that stress that I had been holding on to was relieved. And I felt so much better letting others in to that situation. So I'm going to ask this question again. Is someone bullying you? And is it causing you to feel stomach pain, stomach aches, headaches? Your heart's beating really fast. You feel nervous. You can't sleep at night. If you are being bullied, I want you to look right here. You have permission to tell someone. They need to know you're not being a tattletale. You're not being a baby. 
you are handling the situation in a mature and correct way. There are adults who want to help you and enough is enough and it's not okay that you are being treated that way. And if you see someone being bullied, you need to say something, friend. You need to stand up for them and let an adult know. Um, be that friend. Maybe they feel like they don't have a friend. Be a friend to them. And remember that the Lord is fighting for you and you can talk to him about this bully, about this situation. And this may be scary, but you got to stand up to the bully. I remember standing up to this kid who was making fun of me. It was in church. I was standing on the steps and he was laughing and he was making fun of me. And with tears in my eyes, because I was so scared, I was so afraid what was going to happen. I looked at him and I said, stop doing that to me. Because you are making me feel really bad inside. And I stood there and I waited. I waited for him to laugh. I waited for him to make fun of me. And in my situation, he looked at me and he said, I'm sorry. I thought I was just being funny. I didn't know I was, was hurting. He said, I didn't know I was making you feel bad. And he apologized. And then he quit after that. Now, I know that that's not going to always be the case. But you got to stand up to your bully. And you got to tell an adult. Stand up. Ask God to help you. Remember, you are not fighting alone. He is fighting on your behalf. Find a friend to help you walk through this situation and let someone know that you trust. Let them know about what's going on because enough is enough and you are worth it to get help. You're worth it to get help. And God wants you to know that you don't have to be afraid. And he's with you and he won't leave you and he won't forsake you. And if it is a situation where you are experiencing some bullying going on at home, talk to a teacher, talk to your children's ministry leader um, and let someone intervene. You're not being a bad kid. You're not being uh, bad at all. You just need help and we want to help you. Okay. So reach out and get help. So I am so thankful. We're about to read our prayer, but I have loved reading these 30 days with you as you read day one tomorrow. It's going to talk to you about how you have a real enemy, uh, the devil prowling around to steal your life from you. So I want you to keep reading that day and then read day 32 and so on and so forth. Message me. Let me know how your journey is going. Some of the things that you're still learning. Ask me questions. Maybe as you're reading days, you have some questions that pop up. Ask me. Keep practicing the skills that you have learned over and over again so that you train your brain how to respond differently when those anxiety elephants come. I love you guys. and I'm very proud of you. Let's say our prayer. Dear God, give me courage to tell someone about being bullied. I'm here however you need. I'll be checking in on you through social media. Again, don't forget to reach out and let me know how you're doing. I love you, friends, and I'll be in touch.